Yeah, here we go. Oh, here's, oh, this is a really good one. Hi everybody, my name is Megan Anderson and I'm an extension field agronomist for Iowa State University. I'm standing out in the weed garden at our field extension education lab. Uh, and we've talked about several more common grass species, summer annual grass species uh, that you might run into. And I thought I would just cover three of maybe the slightly less common grass species that we might run into across the state of Iowa each summer. Uh, so those three are going to be barnyard grass, uh, large crabgrass, and fall panicum. And so we'll start here with barnyard grass. This species is really interesting to me because barnyard grass and at least one other really close relative uh, are serious weed issues down in the southern United States in their crop production. And here in Iowa, this weed is really uncommon for us to run into in crop fields unless it's something with a more open canopy, uh, like maybe a horticultural crop uh, or perhaps even uh, things like our corn breeding plots here at the university. Uh, so again, keys to identifying it, we always wanna look vegetatively at this collar region on the grass. And so the cool thing about barnyard grass is that the first thing on these grasses we should always look for is the ligule. And if you'll notice here, this plant actually has no ligule on it. And so this is our only weedy grass species that we might run into where when you pull that back, uh, at the base of the leaf blade, you will not find a membrane and you will not find a fringe of hairs. Uh, so that makes this the easiest species by far of our summer annual weedy grasses to identify. Uh, when it starts to flower, you can see it has this kind of openly branched uh, seed head. Um, and it can take on kind of a purple color. Again, we often don't talk about colors because um, they're not real characteristic for some of these species. There can be a lot of variability. And barnyard grass is really similar. Sometimes it's purple, sometimes it takes on more of the green color. Uh, but we need to look for those vegetative characteristics to be sure. Um, barnyard grass has actually evolved resistance to more uh, herbicide sites of action than water hemp has. Um, so it's just really amazing to me that this can be such a weedy issue in crops in the south and we don't even think of it as a problem up here, but this could, you know, this is a troublesome weed, right? I don't give it enough credit. All right, so the second species, we talked about barnyard grass. Uh, this next one is actually large crabgrass. Uh, this is a pretty common weedy species that we run into in home lawns and gardens and anywhere where we get kind of an open space, like here we've got some space um, underneath some uh, hoop buildings next to some soybeans uh, where they've got plenty of room to grow and they're getting enough sunlight. Uh, this species was actually brought to the U.S. as a forage species and of course now it's one of our most common weeds that we deal with in home lawns. So like our other species, this is a summer annual grass um, and the most important characteristics for identification that we are looking for, especially this time of year when it's not yet flowering, are these vegetative characteristics. The first characteristic that's one of the most interesting ones uh, that's different than most of our other weedy grasses that we're uh, talking about is that it has more of what I would call an ascending growth habit. So basically it's fairly flat on the ground, um, but the ends of the stems will start to grow up uh, toward the sunlight. And so these ones actually are getting a lot of sun and I actually pulled this one from underneath some sunflowers. So you can see that this one was a lot more erect uh, than these other plants because it needed the sun, so it was growing toward it. Uh, so again, like all of our grasses, we're gonna look in this collar region uh, in order to start to identify them. And so this one is different than our others because instead of having a fringe of hairs for a ligule, it has a small membrane. So hopefully you can see that there. Uh, that it has that kind of shiny membranous um, ligule that sticks up fairly high uh, at the juncture where that leaf blade actually turns into the sheath where it hits the stem. Um, the other thing that we're always going to look for is we're going to look for pubescence or hair and where that hair is, how much it has, right? Uh, and so one thing that you'll notice is that this is pretty hairy here on the top surface of the leaf. Uh, it also has hair on the lower surface of it. 
Um, that can be really variable with the large crabgrass. The one thing that usually is pretty consistent is that the sheath itself is absolutely covered in hair. So you can see here that this is covered in uh, kind of, uh, I would say, soft but stiff hairs all over that leaf sheath. So large crabgrass, the genus name is Digitaria, and so that actually refers to the way that the flower or the inflorescence looks when it emerges. So we can't see it here on these plants, but when they do emerge, they're going to emerge uh, as basically kind of an open uh, panicle with branches that end up looking somewhat like a hand. So right, Digitaria digits of the hand or the fingers. Uh, and so we'll expect to see that here uh, fairly soon. Uh, on these plants. Um, so it's a good time to be keeping an eye out for it, uh, especially if we're uh, looking for it in an area where we might want to be pulling them uh, before they're going to produce seed. So the last of our three rare or less occurring, uh, less regularly occurring species uh, of weedy summer annual grass here in Iowa is fall panicum. So again, these are all species that typically like more open canopies. They uh, need more sunlight than our competitive crops can provide. And we actually have a, right at the edge of some very late planted soybeans, we found fall panicum out here at the field lab. And so uh, this is one, um, that you'll first notice that it looks really shiny or it looks fairly shiny when you take a look at it. Uh, so basically when we start to look at it up close, what we're gonna see is that it has basically no hair um, anywhere on the plant. Uh, another thing that you'll notice if you're just looking at a fairly mature plant is you'll actually see that when these stems develop, the nodes become very prominent and it often will actually take on kind of a zigzag pattern to the growth because they get these kind of uh, strong angles where those nodes are. So rather than being kind of perfectly straight up from the ground, we'll start to see kind of a, a you know, real shallow zigzag appear. But just like all of our other species, we want to pay attention to that collar region on them. Uh, so when we look at uh, the fall panicum and we pull this back, uh, the plant overall, you know, and if you just kind of glance at it, it looks a lot like barnyard grass, but you'll see that instead of having no ligule, we have a fringe of hairs there. So this has a very clear, hairy ligule. Um, if you look elsewhere on the plant, you'll notice there's no hair on the upper or lower side of the leaf blade. It has a, a very prominent midrib. Uh, so you'll see it's a much lighter color than the leaf blade itself. That appears as these plants get more mature, right? If we look at younger leaves, we're not gonna see that as well. And so when we see that it has a hairy ligule and no hair on the upper surface of the leaf blade or the lower surface of the leaf blade, some people might confuse that for a uh, green foxtail. So the next thing that we wanna check is we'll look at that sheath right and look at the margins of the sheath so on green foxtail there's going to be a fringe of hairs along the edge of that sheath margin and on the fall panicum there's not going to be anything so it's completely hairless so what i'll do is actually pull this off and then i'm going to unfold it and so right we can look at the edge of that sheath and see that there's actually no hair there so thanks for listening to uh, this brief overview of three less common weedy summer annual grasses that we have here in Iowa. Uh, again, those were fall panicum, uh, barnyard grass, and large crabgrass. So this is a good time of year to get out and start looking for them. Make sure that you pull them uh, if you find them out in your homes or your yards uh, and get out and identify them correctly. That is barnyard. I've been lied to. There's no fall panic.